Welcome back to Fashion Care. So today I'm going to be doing my review of Aston Martin's 2023 Formula One season. So of course their driver lineup this year, along Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll. Fernando Alonso coming over from Alpine where he had been for two years after his comeback into Formula One. And you know, looking at the head-to-head -head stats, it's pretty much utter destruction on Alonso's part. So for points, 206 for Alonso, 74 for Stroll. Average finishing position, 6.2 for Alonso, 9.1 for Stroll. And the gap between the two of them was actually quite a bit bigger uh, going into the summer break, but you know, the car getting worse uh, definitely helped to tank Alonso's stats in that category quite a bit. In qualifying, it wasn't much better either, despite Alonso being the oldest driver on the grid, and Stroll, in theory, being in his prime. Uh, for qualifying pace. Qualifying head-to-head, 19-3 -head, to in favor of Alonso. So not a whitewashing, but very, very close. Uh, the average qualifying gap, just shy of half a second, 0 0.4475 seconds. Uh, and that kind of really helps to explain why this average starting position gap was so big. Uh, 7.8 for Alonso and 12.9 for Stroll. And in my power rankings I did after every race, uh, you can really see the, that difference uh, bearing out here too. Uh, for Alonso, it was an average of four. So one of the best drivers of the season, I felt, along with uh, Verstappen and Hamilton. Whereas for Stroll, uh, his average was 15.1, so quite, quite low. Podiums, eight for Alonso and zero for Stroll. I think after the first couple of races, when we saw how strong the Aston Martin was, uh, I figured Stroll would pick up a podium at some point, but you know, no podiums for the whole year. How do you think, you know, for Stroll, it was a really, really poor year, arguably one of his poor seasons in F1, up there was 2019, I would say, and 2017, his rookie season. Um, but, you know, for Stroll, I think it was a bit, there was a lot of misfortune. Uh, of course, he missed all of testing, which meant uh, with his broken hand, coming back, recovering from that when the car was at its strongest, when Alonso was really, was basically picking up a podium every week. Uh, so I think that's a bit unfortunate on his part. He did have a couple, you know, mechanical DNFs like in Saudi Arabia quite early on where, you know, he could have gotten a very good points finish, but still, um, you know, basically through the summer, through the summer months, uh, he was very, very poor when he didn't really have an excuse, anything to rely on uh, for why uh, his performance was so poor. Of course, uh, one of the big talking points with Aston Martin this year is the upgrades that they made to their car around the middle of the season. Through the first 11 races, uh, their average qualifying position was 7.6 and they got 184 points. Uh, through the second half of the season, their average qualifying position dropped by two whole positions to 9.6 and they only picked up 96 points, which is basically half of the points they picked up in the first half of the year. Um, and for, so basically for Stroll, for example, you know, when, when, he was coming, when he came back, when he was pretty, pretty much close to you know, 100%, the car was basically awful. Uh, it was, it was a, an incredibly unstable mess, as if you go and watch, you know, Alonso's onboards from Monza, for example, uh, the amount of corrections, the amount of oversteer he has to deal with made the car almost was, shows that the car was almost undrivable. And for Aston Martin, I think it's really a tricky year when you look at it as a whole. I think coming into the season, if you told them uh, that Alonso would get eight podiums, they would get 280 points. Uh, they would be Aston Martin, or they would be Alpine in the Constructors' Championship. I think they would be pretty happy. But when you look at they, the fact that they came in with pretty much the second best car, arguably, um, and they basically just got massively outdeveloped, and the fact that Stroll definitely cost them some points, and you know, very, there's a very good argument to be made that Stroll cost them fourth in the Constructors' Championship. Uh, I do think that they're going to be a bit disappointed with this season. But, you know, a bit like 2020, I think how they go from here will be really important. If they can build on this year's car, if they can be towards the front again next year, um, I think that's a really good sign. If they kind of make a massive step back like they did in 2021, like I'm about to go, I'm about to go over, um, it could be a bad sign for the future. So uh, looking at the last four years, like I mentioned, 2020, of course, with the infamous Tracing Point pink Mercedes car, uh, they scored 210 points, but they, of course, had a 15-point penalty uh, for basically copying the brake ducts, uh, which was against the rules that year, but it would have been legal the previous year, uh, which led to that kind of miscommunication, basically. Uh, they finished fourth in the constructors, and without that penalty, they would have finished third. Uh, their average pull gap was 1.023 seconds, which at that time was honestly pretty strong. Of course, Mercedes built a very strong car that year. 
2021, of course, there was the uh, changes to the floor that Pirelli had requested uh, because cars were too fast and uh, Aston Martin and Mercedes were the two teams that were hurt uh, the most by these regulations, as we heard Otmer Safnauer on the radio constantly complaining about. Uh, so they dropped back to 77 points, seven from the constructors, and an average pull gap of 1.384 seconds. So they're ba basically three tenths of a second slower than the year before. 2022, the uh, first year of the new regulations came out with a really, very really poor car, arguably the slowest on the grid, 55 points, seventh in the constructors, 1.937 seconds. But with that year's, last year's Austin Martin in 2022, they honestly, they developed pretty well. And basically by the end of the season, uh, at least on race pace, they were very, very close with Alpine and McLaren. They were a bit behind on qualifying pace, but you can also kind of chalk that up to uh, Stroll and Vettel being their drivers. No disrespect with Vettel, but uh, I think Lonzo has definitely shown that uh, it's particularly in qualifying, he was kind of off of the pace of what was possible with that car. Um, and then of course this year, 2023, 280 points, fifth in the constructors, uh, best since 2020, average pull gap 0 0.774 seconds, which is honestly 1 point, yeah, 1 1.2, 1.15 seconds faster than last year. Very, very impressive uh, in that average pull gap improvement. Um, and they're definitely not going to be able to make that kind of uh, improvement next year. But I do think that they're going to be hoping to still be towards the front in that fr uh, fight. Uh, at the front, fighting for wins, fighting for podiums regularly. So uh, that's my review of Aston Martin. I think overall a pretty uh, successful year, I think, given where they were last year. But I do think that there's a lot of room for improvement. And that's something that they're definitely going to be wanting to build on going into 2024. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.